Hey everybody, JK here. Um, this is a video accompaniment to my uh, slide attacks tutorial on the AmazingKing.com. Um, slide attacks are, uh, are really neat because they're a different way to attack ciphers than the usual statistical methods like differential and linear cryptanalysis. Um, they were developed to, to counter this idea in, in cipher design that if you just kept adding rounds to a cipher, in other words, if you just keep repeating the same thing over and over and over again, that it would necessarily add security. And for the most part it did against differential and linear attacks. But uh, these two really smart gentlemen came along and, uh, and they basically said that was a bunch of shit and they showed why with these slide attacks. Um, before we describe the attack itself, we're going to check out uh, block ciphers in general. Um, this is a uh, this is one type of uh, symmetrical uh, cryptography. Uh, what that means is that the person sending information and the person receiving it are both using the same key material, the same secret. Um, the basic structure is that uh, plain text goes in, it gets encrypted with a key, and produces ciphertext. And the goal of this process is that when given the ciphertext, in other words, if an enemy intercepts it, you don't want it to be you don't want them to be able to recover the plain text without the key. Um, block ciphers are typically broken down into rounds. Um, these are these are repeating uh, groups of operations. So plain text will come in. It'll do some fancy math using these are called subkeys. So the real key gets broken down or gets manipulated such that it produces these subkeys. So first it gets combined with subkey zero and then it goes to the next round. These are the same operations in each of these, uh, these round functions. It's all the same. The only thing that changes between rounds is the subkey that's being used, being combined. Um, and you get through, in this case, four rounds and you get the ciphertext out of it. Um, and we said that uh, if the attacker has the ciphertext, we don't want him to get the plain text. That's the, uh, the main functionality of cryptography from this perspective anyway. Um, there's another thing you want to guard against, and that's what if the attacker recovers some plain text and its corresponding ciphertext that's all been encrypted with the same key. So let's say he sends uh, attack at dawn and encrypts it with, uh, I don't know, call it password, and it produces some scrambly mess down here. He intercepts these two bits. He doesn't get the key, but he intercepts these, both of these bits. Let's say he does that for a bunch more messages. He has like a thousand. And they've all been encrypted with that same key password. His goal is to take these two known bits and do some analysis to recover that key. It's called a, a known plain text attack. Now, the real trick is to do all that and do it faster than it would take if he just tried every key. Trying every key, brute forcing it, you know, just using raw computing power to uh, to guess what the key is, and then take some take one piece of known plain text, check it, and see if it equals ciphertext. You know, if it does, then you get the key. That's called exhaustive search. It's pretty much a worst case scenario when it comes to analyzing ciphers. So our goal in cryptanalysis is to recover that key in less time or with less computing power than it would take by exhaustive search. For this uh, tutorial, this uh, video and whatnot, um, I came up with a, a silly little cipher. Um, I call it Toy 100, and it's crossed out here because I decided for this one to only show uh, two rounds. So we call it Toy 2. But this is two rounds of Toy 100. Um, the plain text comes in, and it enters the first round. It gets XORed with the first subkey. These subkeys are really just two halves of, the, of a full key. Um, everything in, in here, you know, the plain text, the subkeys, the ciphertext, it's all eight bits. Those are eight bit blocks. So we send the plain text block in, eight bits, it, can, it gets XORed with this eight bits of the key called K0. Then it gets sent through an S box. You can read more about those on the website, but basically, if you send the number 3 into here, it'll always come out as, say, 5. If 
if you send the, the, the number zero, it'll always come out as nine, you know, something like that. And it's meant to be, you know, pseudo random. It's supposed to have all kinds of cool properties to prevent linear and differential attacks. But for us, we don't really care. Just uh, pretend this just goes through and just changes it in some predefined way that, importantly, that the attacker knows. He knows everything about that S box. So we can start here and we can reverse through it. It's all good. All right, that's round one. Then the same thing happens again, except this time we XOR it with sub key one. So this is another eight bits of the key. So the full key is actually 16 bits long. So eight bit block, 16 bit key. So it XORs with sub key one and it gets sent through an S box just like in the first round, the same S box even, and it produces the cipher text. All right, that's two rounds uh, of this toy cipher, this, to uh, this uh, uh, toy 100's round function. The actual toy 100 that we're going to be attacking has this times 50. So round one, two, three, four, five, and it just repeats, you know, a hundred times. So this block here happens 50 times. Uh, we're going to call this section here a double round for obvious reasons. Um, in those subsequent rounds, this pattern repeats. It's always the same subkey 0 and the same subkey 1. And that's important for the slide attack. That's one of the requirements. You have to have this repeating chunk of operations that does not have changing subkeys. Alright, so we're going to introduce the, uh, the slide attack itself now. So this is uh, you know, a simple four round uh, cipher here. Uh, well, we, we can pretend that it's, uh, that it, that it, say it's, it's toy, uh, toy eight, I guess would be applicable here because there's two rounds in each of these uh, F blocks. Um, you'll notice that uh, these Ks are all the same. It's not K0, K1, etc. So this section right here repeats exactly as it goes through. So what happens is we have a known plain text zero up here. It gets encrypted through the cipher, and we get C zero down here. So this is a known plain text, and this is the corresponding known cipher text. This is pair zero. We have another known pair called pair one. Plain text one goes through with the same key. All this is the same material. So there are two independent pairs that we've recovered that are encrypted with the same key. and produces C1. This is called a slid pair when this arrangement occurs. What happens is the FP0, it goes through one of these, uh, these double rounds, these two rounds in a row that have the same key material, and it produces a uh, value right here in between the first two double rounds. If we have another pair, this P1 that happens to equal the output of that first double round in P0, then a slid pair occurs. It's, it's, it's pretty much the same thing that happened over here, but it happened one double round later is a way you could look at it. So this P1 equals this value right here. <clears throat> and a side effect of this is that the input to the last round of, of a pair one equals ciphertext zero. You know, it's the same process, it's just offset by one double round. So what we do with the slide attack is that we assume, we just jump to the conclusion that this happened. And then we test for that, and then we test for that, uh, that happening. So we take C0 and pretend that it's right there, because these two are equal, right? We know C0, we know C1. This double round, we use that information to take a guess at that key right there. Um, this is, an, you know, it's only two rounds of this very, very simple, you know, toy cipher. It's fairly easy to break that if, if you know, do a little known plain text attack against this one round right here, and recover a possible key. So let's say that we've got a, a potential key here. We take it up here and we plug it into the first round of P0. Now we encrypt P0 through this single double round right here, this one first, this first double round, using that guess that we took at, 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 the, at the key, 
that we got down here. If we come down here, the output of that double round, if it equals that plain text one that we recovered earlier, then there is a very good possibility that that key is correct, that it was used to, to, to make this structure, and then we know the key. Um, there's always the possibility that that didn't happen, it's just a coincidence that these two work out. But uh, that's why if we think we have a match, if we think we found a slid pair and therefore validate that key we guessed, then we just take that same key and some of this known, this known material and we just run through this, uh, the whole entire cipher and see if it equals a ciphertext. And we do it with this one, we do it with like 10 more. And if it all works out, then we found the key and we win. Um, and remember, a moment ago I mentioned that if you have the input to this, round, this double round, and you have the output, you can recover the key. We're going to look back at that for a moment. Okay, we're going back a step here. This is the double round. This is that, that F function, that slide attack uh, diagram from a second ago. Let's say that we know ciphertext and we know plain text. What we don't know is K0 and K1. Um, just using math and reversing this stuff, you can't work inward enough to get both of these values. So what we're going to do is take a guess at K1. It, it, it doesn't matter. You start from 0 and you work up to 256. That's what an 8-bit value, those are the possible uh, values it can hold is 0 to 2, uh, 255. So we're going to test 256 possible K0s. So we're already doing some work, but you'll see that it's worth it. So what we do is we take a guess, we XOR it with the plain text, and that gives us a value right here, the input to that S box. Then we run that through the S box. So now we have this value. Then we take the cipher text, we run it backwards through the S box here. So now we have this and this. And we XOR them together and get the corresponding K1. So take a guess and then calculate the corresponding sub key one. So looking back at the full slide attack, if we assume that C0 is correct, that it equals this input to the last uh, round function, double round, we still have to take 256 guesses at K0, but we get K1 automatically when we do that. And then we have a candidate K to check up here for this uh, equivalency. All right, now that we know the mechanics of what we're going to be attacking and how we're going to be doing it to form the slide attack, we're going to kind of do a, uh, like an overview, I suppose. We're going to walk through the whole thing and how we're going to construct it in code to attack that Toy 100 cipher. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to gather around 30 known plain text ciphertext pairs. So we're going to get 30 of these, showing two of them here. So what we're going to do is we're going to accept that we know the plain text, we know the resulting ciphertext, and we know that they've all been encrypted with the same key, but we don't know what the key is. Then we're going to take those 30 pairs, and we're going to slide them against each other one at a time. So we're going to check uh, pair number one against pair number two. Then we're going to check pair number one against pair number three. And we're just going to keep doing that, and then we're going to do pair number two against pair number one, pair number two against pair number three, pair number two against pair number four, and we're just going to proceed like that. And what we're doing each time we iterate through that is we're assuming that this arrangement has happened. That the first pair happened as normal, I guess you could call it, and the second pair is one uh, is one encryption ahead, is one round ahead, one double round ahead of the first that's being compared. So, so we'll start with the, with the first one, say, and we'll check this uh, ciphertext here in uh, pair zero, and we'll pretend that the input to the uh, last double round function of uh, plain text one, we'll assume that, that, that that's equal to that, that this has happened. And then we're going to take 
the ciphertext of uh, pair one, and we're going to use it together with the assumed input to that double round function. Once we do that, as we saw before, we can we can take a guess at the key. So, but each time we do this, we have to take a straight up guess at sub key sub k uh, zero sub key zero. This k right here is actually composed of sub key zero and sub key one. So we're going to try all 256 possibilities for sub key zero, and then calculate the corresponding sub key one. Now that corresponding relationship between the two subkeys is only valid for this particular pair, this particular input and this output. Once we have that, we have this guess at k0 and k1. We bring it up here and we run it through the first round and see if it matches. If it does, we test the key and make sure it's legit and then call ourselves good. So let's say that Let's say that these, this is a correctly slid pair, so it's, it's as it's shown in the diagram. These are equal to each other. Now, what if we guess the wrong subkey zero? I mean, we're go, it's going to happen because we have to test all 256 possibilities. Let's say k zero is you know, 13, but the first one we test is zero and then one, two, three, on up. So if this is, if this is zero and it's supposed to be 13, we're going to necessarily get the wrong k1 out of this. You know, the input to the last double round is correct. The output is correct as far as our assumption goes. But if we get the subkey 0 wrong, it's also going to make the subkey 1 wrong. And then when we bring it up here and we encrypt through the first double round using those keys we found and compare it, it's not going to match the uh, the plain text that goes into the uh, that goes into pair 1 over here. So that, that's what happens if, you, if you're looking at the wrong subkey, but you have everything correct. You found a slid pair. Now, let's jump ahead and see what happens if we do get the right k0. It's going to produce the correct k1 for this combination of input and output. We're going to bring it up here. It's going to, it's going to encrypt the double round just like it did in the, you know, during the actual process that produced this known pair. We're going to compare it, and it's going to equal and then we can go test the key and it's going gonna, it's gonna to come out good to go. You found the, uh, the correct key and you win. You can you know, decrypt any, any, any ciphertext that you find that use that key. Now what happens if we don't have a slid pair? Let's say that our assumption is wrong. Because we're assuming that we're doing an awful lot of assuming here. You know, we're taking all 30 of our known plaintext pairs, sliding them against each other and assuming that the slid pair occurred. That this relationship happened equal and equal. So what's going to happen is we think that this is C0 right here, but it's actually something else. So when we plug C0 in, we're, this, uh, this operation right here is going to produce the wrong result. You know, we guess K0. Let's say we guess the correct subkey 0. Let's say we do guess 13, but we're not on a slid pair. The interaction of this input being wrong in, you know, even with subkey zero and ciphertext one being correct, it's going to produce the wrong subkey one, the second subkey that's involved in this double round operation. So when we bring those keys up and plug them in here, k one is going to be wrong. It's going to produce the wrong result out of this first double round, and it's not going to match. So even though we found the correct k zero, the k one's wrong, and it's not going to match. Now, there's always the possibility that this will match. You know, it's, it's, it's like a, you know, it might just happen. Maybe that's just, I mean, whenever we take an 8-bit block and we encrypt it with 16 bits, there's the possibility that, that there's, there's going to be two keys that decrypt or encrypt that, that, that block the same. It's, it's, it's called a collision. It's just going to happen. But when we go and verify, hey, does this correctly decrypt the rest of my data? You'll find that the answer is no. So what we're going to do now now that we kind of have an overview of that, we're going to look at some actual numbers. This is this is what I calculated from the uh, from the cipher itself. This is the the full 100 rounds of Toy 100. So what happened here? This is a what shows what happens when you get a bad pair when you're comparing two of these known plain texts against each other, and your assumption is wrong. 
So we send in AE as the plain text on this this line of this line of known plain text. You know, it goes through the thing. The only thing we have access to during the attack is what's circled. So we got access to both plain text and both ciphertext. We can't see anything else in between. But I've drawn them here for, so you can see how it works. So what happens is this goes in here, it gets encrypted. This is our key. This is our correct key. This showed what actually happened when these things were being ran through with the real key. It produces 29 out of the first uh, double round in this line. And over here, we see that the plain text that, we, that, 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 uh, the plain text that went through here, it's F9. F9 is not 29, obviously. So this means that a slid pair has not occurred. We can't tell that because we don't have access to 29 yet. We haven't you know, analyzed enough to know what that number is, or even could be. So what happens is this thing proceeds, it goes through a completely different path as far as, you know, as far as the encryption goes and the numbers being manipulated by the operations. And this one proceeds, these are totally divergent right now. Um, it ends up making uh, E0 for the ciphertext in this lineup. And over here, it ends up making 1 in the end, okay. But the input was B0, they don't match, so not a slid pair. It's not useful to us at all. But we don't know that yet, we have to assume that, that a slid pair happened here. So what's going to happen is we're going to prove that a slid pair didn't happen. So what we do is we take that one, this uh, ciphertext down here, we take the assumed input, which is E0, that's the part we know. We don't know B0. We plug it in over here. We do our magic. Let, let, let's say we pick uh, 34. Let's say we guess the correct subkey 0. You know, We run through them and eventually we hit it. It's going to make a different subkey 1. The correct one is A2. You know, but but that but that's that's dependent on this being E zero right here. So that's that, that, that's not going to help us. You know, let's say it makes it, it might make eleven or or whatever F F five. You know, it could be anything. And then we're going to take that those two sub keys, plug them in up here, thirty four and F five say, and it's going to create the wrong the wrong uh, output out of the first uh, double round. We're going to compare it to that F9 and go, oh, this, you know, oh, this is this is this is 29 here, or this is or whatever this happens to be, and they're not going to match. So we know immediately that that key is wrong. We still have to go through the whole thing. We still have to go through all 256 possibilities of K0. But if it wasn't a slid pair, when we get through all those possibilities, none of them will have been a match, and we'll know that this pairing is not a slid pair. So that's sure that kind of shows what happens when a bad pair goes down. What about a good pair? Um, for the right so side, it's the same. It's the same numbers. So you can kind of think of it as, you know, the bad pair we just showed. We tested, you know, a plain text over here slid against this or against this one, and it was wrong. So we move on to the next plain text and we slide it against this this first one we showed. So this one's the correct one. We're going to show how we can how we can prove that and get the key. So we got the same a, uh, AE as before. It goes in. It gets it gets encrypted by uh, by, by, by the key as usual. The 34A2. You know, and the same thing happens over here. We can't tell that this relationship has occurred yet. But we just assume that this E0 translates over to this, this offset uh, plain text path. We assume that E0 has occurred here. We do our, we do our operation to recover the uh, K0. Let's say we start with, with 0, like always. We start with K0 equals 0. When we do this, we're going to get the wrong K1. We'll plug them in up here. It won't equal 29. So we throw that away. We go to k0 equals 1, k0 equals 2. Eventually we land on k0 equals 34. This is all in, these all are in hex, by the way, if that wasn't clear. That's what those crazy little letters are in my numbers. So check it out. We get the correct subkey k0. We assume e0 is the input, which it is in this case. And then we do our operation, and we find the corresponding k1 for all these... Uh, all these inputs. We, we, we get, we get subkey K1 equals A2. So we plug those in up here, and this is all correct. AE, when you encrypt through one double round with this particular key, happens to produce 29. We compare that with this, with this known plain text in the, uh, in the other pair, and we see that they match. So by assuming this, 
using this and then plugging it in up here and getting a match, it kind of ties the two together and proves that a slid pair happened. And then all we have to do is take those sub keys we found, test them on a few uh, on a few of our other known plain texts, and just make sure it's a you know it's not a coincidence that, that is a coincidence that this happened. And then we've recovered both of the sub keys and thus the key.